you do not want to hire the wrong CA. You do not want to hire the wrong person and have them on your front desk or on your team. That costs us time, it costs us emotion, it costs us energy. It costs us to have the wrong person. So today, I'm going to give you the four simple tests that you can apply to any person you're thinking of hiring to find out if they fit your team and if they fit the role of a front desk person. All right. My name is Greg Venning, and I'm part of the Quest Chiropractic Coaching Team. So let's show you how to apply four simple tests to see if somebody who wants to come into your team is the right person to have at your front desk. And remember, your front desk has to be exceptional. You deserve to have somebody exquisite at your front desk. Your people that you serve deserve to have somebody exquisite at the front desk dealing with them. Your business deserves to have somebody exquisite. So let's help you with getting to the four simple tests that you can apply to anybody coming in to make sure that you don't hire the wrong person. Okay, so let's go to our whiteboard. All right, so obviously pause and cut this part while we get ourselves up and running. What you're looking at here is something called the innate model, which is a neurologically driven flow for how human behavior works, how organizational behavior works as well. So the way it works is when we, we have the, the right side of the brain here, we have the left side of the brain here, and then we also have the, the front of the forebrain up here, and we have the hind or the rear part of the brain here. Okay, so when we look at that, when we're looking for somebody who is exquisite at the front desk, they need to have great organizational skills. And those organizational skills fit into this space that we call quadrant two. That's where great organizational skills fit. And that's going to be one of the key hallmarks of somebody who's great at the front desk. So if we zoom in to this quadrant two space, we've just said we want to see great organizational skills. We also want to see somebody who can follow directions because this quadrant two is about a log logical linear flow through, through life, really. And so we want them to be able to follow directions. Now, we might think this is a simple thing on its own, but really when you're following directions, whether verbal or written, the person has to be able to take something that's mental, either these words coming in or these words written down on a page or some kind of other direction, and then make it into the physical world. And there's actually quite a specific set of inherent ability and skill that somebody has to have in your practice for that to be easy for them. Because remember, you want these um, these inherent abilities to be here that then you can train and upskill on. So these are the, the base foundation that somebody who comes in as a, as a front desk person would have that you could then build and then train your specific policies and procedures on. And without these baseline abilities, you're really going to have a, a hard time trying to generate these abilities. That's where training and that's where somebody at your front desk who isn't good at this is such a heartache for you, for the people that you serve and for everybody within your team. Because to be organized and to be able to follow directions is really something absolutely key and simple. We want them to be able to get things done. There has to be the minimum amount of dithering going on to be able to just get things done and flow from one thing to the next thing to the next thing to the next thing. Because the front desk role is partially an admin role, that's what fits into this quadrant two space is this concept of admin. We want them to be able to get that stuff done because the quicker and the more efficiently they can get things done, the more attention they can pay to people. And that happens in the, in the next quadrant. We'll cover that in a different video. But if they don't have this, they can be as magical as possible with people. But if, they, if you're falling down on the admin, on the front desk part, your life is a nightmare um, as, the, as the chiropractor trying to deal with that, whether you're an associate or whether you're the principal. So getting things done is the next one. And then the person needs to be punctual. 
Time is an incredibly important construct at the front desk. Now, we know in the clinical role, we want to be able to extract, contract and expand and play with time and have it a little bit malleable. But at the front desk part, there's an expectation to have this linear flow of time really well handled. So your person at the front desk should be meeting all of those four requirements very, very, very well for you at the front desk. So how do you test with this? What do you do? Practically, when you're thinking of hiring someone, what do you do practically to be able to assess whether these, these inherent abilities are there and they're present um, to stop you from hiring the wrong person? So let's come down now to what we promised in the beginning is the four simple tests. So test number one is going to get them to arrange some filing. So in the interview process, we strongly suggest having your candidates come on in and uh, spend some time with you at your front desk and shadow you for a shift or shadow your front desk team for a shift. And we strongly suggest that your front desk team gives them these tests as they go to make sure that they're meeting these requirements. So test number one is give them a whole bunch of files that are out of order and give them the instruction of how to arrange them, whether it's alphabetically or numerically, whatever it is, and get them to then file those and bring them back to your team. And your team sees how accurate they were when they did it. And they see how quickly the person did it and how quickly they could take on some, uh, some instruction and then produce something in reality. And this seems, when we do a video like this, something really uh, basic, but you'd be surprised at how much you'll pick up people's inability to really just take something mental and make it physical and to just do filing. Now, your person who's going to be exquisite at the front desk will be able to take this on, maybe ask one or two clarifying questions, and then get the task done quietly on their own and come back with an arranged set of filing. So that's one test that you want to do. The next one you want to do is get them to add up a column of numbers. Now, again, this seems really, really simple. And what I suggest is maybe make it into kind of like a debit and a credit. And you can have people who, you can have a, a, a list of things that needs to be balanced. Maybe somebody's um, account is slightly unbalanced right now. Now, don't expect them to be able to navigate your software without instruction. So you'd want this to maybe be printed out on a sheet of paper and give them a calculator or something. But get them to then add up some kind of numerical thing and get something to balance or find out where their own imbalance is. And you're checking their numeracy skills. You're checking their accuracy. Again, you're checking their ability to follow a task. But it's really important because they're going to be at the front desk, because they deal with money there, you want them to have this inherent ability to be able to do it. Again, be careful. Don't put them straight into your, into your, um, your practice management system because there's, you're, you're really testing a few other things there. But you want this printed out maybe on a piece of paper or something really, really simple they can use. Maybe even doing it on an Excel spreadsheet if there's a computer that you can give it to them. Um, but their ability to deal with numbers in this most simple way possible is really, really, really important. Great. The next one is you're going to give them a project. During the hiring process, we strongly suggest that you give them a project to do. Now, you want to make this reasonably simple, but the idea with the project is you're getting them to manage their own time, their own process. And this can be something either um, uh, written, so like a chapter of a book. Don't make it the whole book because they have to be able to read it. It could be a video you want them to go and watch, or it could be something audio maybe an episode of a podcast or a part of an audio book or some audio that you might have recorded. And what you get them, get them to do is take that information and to summarize it. And you give them a deadline in which to summarize it by. Now, again, don't make this too complex. You don't want them to have to spend a whole week just reading or watching or listening to something that's hours and hours and hours long. Give them something that'll take them maybe half an hour, an hour to consume and then create some kind of summary forward on you. And, and you're judging this on their ability to, first of all, do it. The second of all, how well they present it. Because quadrant two is very much a neat space. It likes organization. It likes neatness and symmetry. So you're going to see how they present this to you. If they have a written thing, you're going to see how, how well they can actually use language because they're not going to be many mistakes if somebody's really, really impeccable in this space. But giving them some kind of project to take away and come back to you is really important. And the next one is simply observing their timekeeping. 
if their timekeeping is flawless, if their view on the world is that if you're not five minutes early, then you're five minutes late, then they're strong in the space. But if they're late and they're flustered, then that's a scoring them down in the space. Then they're failing one of the four tests. Now, do they have to pass all four of them with flying colors? Maybe not, because you don't want somebody who's too empowered in this quadrant two space either, because then they're going to be too imbalanced and too admin task focused and not people enough focused. So you want to see them do well in this. They might not be exceptional in every single one, but you do want them to pass a majority of those very easily so you can tick that box. So if you have those sorted, you know that you have somebody who can fulfill the admin requirements of a, of a chiropractic assistant role, your front desk role, and then you can add to that the ability to connect with people in some other uh, way that you can test that and draw that out of them during an interview process. So that is your four simple tests to make sure that you're getting somebody at your front desk who can do the role well to avoid you hiring the wrong person.